Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back for another Q&A session. So yes, this is an extremely delayed video right? for the month of April Q&A. Right, so basically what happened is, firstly, I forgot to release the post for the Q&A. Right, secondly, as I was about to make a video, right, my webcam just broke down. So I got to get another one. Right, So here it is, the Q&A session for April. Right, So I do receive a lot of interesting questions this time as well. Right, So let's go through a few of them. Alright, so here comes first question of the day, asking Yok Sotov versus Kyo in the Hephaestus team. Your thoughts on it? Alright, second, can you predict if any cards will be out to buff Crash Fever cards, especially Mobius, in the upcoming weeks? Alright, number three, the best way to farm Egyptian Gods skill level. Right, I think some of you will know the answer to question three, right? But let's answer them one by one. Right, Kyo versus Yok Sotov. Right, in my opinion, I feel that Kyo is slightly better than Yok Sotov. Right, so yes, Kyo takes longer to charge. Uh, he's at CD CD seven, right? Whereas Yok Sotov, um, damage dealing active skill, right? Not the convert one, is gonna be at CD five. Right? but the problem is Kyo in a Hephaestus team is highly sustainable. You know what I mean? And Yok Sotov, yes, she deal she probably deal like more damage than Kyo, right? When he's fully charged, but you lose that active skill when your team dips below fifty percent total HP. Right, in some cases whereby if your burst is unsuccessful, uh, maybe like you did not dissolve any, uh, if you dissolve, if you fail to dissolve all the electrifying wounds on the board, right, enemy attacks you, your attack, uh, your HP dips below 50%, you lose that York sort of active skill, right? So, uh, Kyo, on the other hand, uh, can be maintained if you dissolve a, a group of six or more runestones, which is 100% maintainable, uh, sustainable <laughs> in, in a Hephaestus team. Right, so in terms of stability, uh, Kyo is definitely better than Yogg Sotov, right? Damage uh, output isn't that big of a difference, I feel. Right, so I, I tried both of them before and I still prefer using Kyo over Yogg Sotov. Right, so, but in terms of neutralized reset, both of them are being affected. So um, looking at the overall picture, I still feel that Kyo Kusanagi takes the crown. Right, so second, uh, question asking can you predict any cards be up out to buff crash fever cards especially mobius right so i think i've discussed this before right like mobius uh the problem with mobius is not her team members but her uh, mobius herself is the problem right so the the problem about mobius is that her leader skill doesn't help um to get this maximum multiplier out of her Right, so basically, uh, Mobius for leader skill enchants the most number attribute that is most in number right, into enchanted runes. Right? So it could be 6 runes, it could be 8 runes and stuff like that. Right? But the thing is, to hit that maximum multiplier, I think you need to dissolve like 10 or 15 enchanted runes right, in order to get that extra multiplier. Right? So that's going to be a bit um, on the unpredictable side right because there is yes there are chances that you can get you know like 15 enchanted runes on the board um, but what are the chances right so most of the time you won't be able to hit that maximum multiplier unless you you know on your active skill which is at CD 8 very very long CD right so uh, I just hope that Matt Hit can do a bit of adjustment to Mobius right so one of my suggestion is that uh, instead of enchanting just the most num uh, attribute that is most in number on the board, right? You enchant because I think Mobius needs like fifteen. Uh, need to dissolve fifteen enchanted runestones to get that maximum multiplier. So why not let her enchant fifteen runestones on the board every turn? Right, makes sense, right? So, a uh, priority is the attribute attribute that is most in number. And then after that can be random runes, right? At least that give give us a chance to dissolve fifteen enchanted runes to get that maximum multiplier, rather than you know maybe like enchanting seven most you know most abundant attribute runes on the board, which makes no sense because it doesn't hit that multiplier at all, all right? So uh, mo for Mobius case, I I really think that is the card problem and not the members, right? So. For upcoming weeks, uh, as you guys have probably seen the trailer already, a brand new 
Machina series is gonna be added into the Diamond Seal pool, right? Which is probably gonna be um, slightly useful to maybe Turing and um, Mobius. Right? Yes, Mobius. Right, but Mobius is still a problem. Right, so number three, the best way to farm Egyptian god skill level is to feed your baby starter cards. Right, you can get them in friend seal, collect five of them, feed them to your non, uh, the, the Egyptian god that yet to evolve, you know, the baby Egyptian form. Yes, that's how you max your skill level from there. Right, off to the next question. Okay, so the next question asking, when is the next black card coming? Right, so it's, it's funny like how, why people always send me these kind of questions, right? Thinking that I work for Madhead and stuff like that and I supposed to know the dates and stuff, right? Honestly, I don't really know when's the exact date coming out. We can only, players like us can only give like a rough estimation of when is it going to come out, right? Based on the, the trends that has been occurring, you know, the, for the past few black card events. Right, for example, uh, Chinese New Year, they did this black card event, right? So, uh, recently, we just had this like collaboration, Crash Fever and stuff like that. I'm right? not sure when Hunter x Hunter is coming out, right? So, at this point of time, I'm predicting that this black card is going to appear first, right? Followed by the Hunter x Hunter. So, my prediction is around the June period, right? right? Give Madhead one more month, right? I'm sure this black card is going to come, right? Prepare your diamonds. Okay, so next question. Are you happy with the current charge rate of Machina race, right? Meaning the fuel, right? Is it possible to increase charge rate to 4% per X attribute, right? Depending on the Machina attribute, and 2% per heart, right? So at this point of time, uh, the charge rate is 2% per X attribute, right? And 1% per heart, right? So that is going to be pretty slow charging in my opinion, right? Especially if you're going to run like a multi-attribute kind of Machina's um, Machina setup, right? So it's gonna take like a few turns before every single attribute hits hundred percent, and you get that Machina uh, BGM, right? So, um, like with the exception of Li Tequai, which you know auto generates um Earth runes like crazy, right? He can probably probably hit hundred percent in three to four turns. Okay, so in my opinion, I feel that there is um definitely ways to improve how Machina charge their fuel, right? For example, as you can see in the upcoming uh, Mechanical Life series, right? That's going to be added into Diamond Seal Pool, as I mentioned earlier, right? There is two cards, the Water card and the Light card that are able to do a fusion form, right? Upon fusion, all Machina increase their fuel by 20%, right? So that's one way to do it by fusion, right? So uh, you can see fusion can do many stuff such as Fenrir, right? Fuse, you recover full HP, you, you charge up the Dragonic Compulsion bar. Right, so as of this card, upon fusion, you add charge to all the Machinas in your card. Uh, so there is a suggestion, right? There is an idea, right? That I, I can propose to Madhead. Right? Madhead should like hire me for all these like brilliant ideas, right? So let me know if you think that this is um, uh, viable or possible, right? So hear me out. Right, so. Uh, Machina is being a new race here, right? So they have yet to get this sort of enchantress kind of effect, right? Other than the Earth Machina that is coming out soon, right? The mechanical life, right? So what what I can propose is an enchantress type of Machina, right? Upon activation, uh, you reduce probably like reduce your recovery by fifty percent or stuff like that, and on top of that. Right, uh, you times two your charge rate, right? Something like like what uh Nicholas have mentioned here, right? And then upon reaching hundred percent fuel, team attack times one point five. Right, so you sacrifice your recovery to give you, uh, a faster charge. Right, upon reaching hundred percent, you get a team attack boost. Right, so, uh, it's more like a it's it's a very enchantress style kind of effect, right? In which you you try to get you get a boost, right? But there is a downside to it as well. Right, so let let me know whether this effect is good enough to be a cut, right? A, a possible, a possible future cut. <laughs> right, just letting Madhead know. Right, so this is really uh, there is definitely ways to improve the fuel charging rate right, of Machinas. There is just many many possibilities at this point of time. This is what I can think of. Right, so let me know in the comments below. Okay, next. Do you think that Turing really counts 
uh, do you think that Turing really counts as a rare among the rares? Right, of course, being that 1% draw, draw rate. <laughs> okay, and number two, which character in the Digital Hatcher series do you think is the best card? Right, so at this point of time, let's answer the first question first. Right, Turing, I would say Turing is really considered a rare among the rare. Right, uh, I would agree that she's gonna be the best um, card in the long run. Right, so let's not underestimate the power of Makina first because at this point of time there is very very limited cards that Makina can actually utilize. Right, so for Turing uh, is running a Makina human setup uh, which is which have many possibilities really but uh, for Makina as in mono Makina right there is definitely ways uh, to improve her playstyle. Right, so when all these card come into existence in, in TOS right, that's gonna start to uh, buff up Turing and, and, and her playstyle right? so I find that Turing is really have the potential to grow right? just that there are no cards no viable cards that is supporting her at this moment right? so once all those cards comes in she's gonna be more powerful than what she is right now Right, so of course answering question two, the best card is probably gonna be Turing as well. Right. So other than Turing herself as a leader, right, you put her in a as an ally in any other Earth setup, right? It's a very, very um in, in a sense good card as well. Right. So she's a bot clear, she has a bot clear effect, right? She has a damage reduction effect, she has that uh, she bot clears, right, and then she gives you heart heart runes light runes as well right so i find that overall she's in terms of play style right what, what she can do can actually be pretty massive right in terms of her as a leader and as a member as well right so i have yet to use her as a member where right? maybe uh i'll throw it in the lee Kwai team as well right because now makina um we have a lot of bot clear kind of makina now a lot i won't say a lot right we have Turing, right that's one uh, Mobius is a convert. Let's not let's leave her alone. <laughs> okay, and then the other bot clear is um, Freud, uh, which is the non rare card. So Freud is a dark machina, right? So if I were to play Li Guai, it's probably gonna put we're gonna put Turing into Li Guai team, and then that solves the entire bot clear kind of issue, right? So no problems with weather runes whatsoever. So uh, Turing overall is still a very very useful card, right? Damage reduction. Uh, don't really come by that often nowadays, right? So, uh, I would say that she's a very, very good collection, right? Let's move on to the next question. Okay, so this question affects me and pretty much every single player out there that is playing Arena right now, right? So, the question asks, what do you think? Uh, what do you think about how things work in Arena right now, right? So, uh, not too long ago, Mehe implemented this um, refresh. A patch right in which that previously we can refresh uh, indefinitely right to get the towers or the arenas that we want right and then after that request that particular owner of the tower to change to a simple stage right and then this person can attempt it with you know like the best bonus card there is for that week and then get scores like 4400 and stuff like that per run and you do it five times and that's like the maximum score you get do it every day and you're gonna be probably top 10 or top 10 king you know kind of position right so uh in my opinion that, that's gonna be like the super rich kind of play style right i mean not to mention no life because you need to massively refresh the arena and you know spending money and time just to go through a tower that you you you, you find right and do all sorts of things that breaks the fun of arena right so now they ref reduce the refresh rate from infinite times to two times right so that actually uh, solves the problem in a way right because now people can only refresh the max two times so that so now they only can pray that they run into the tower that uh that is owned by someone they know all right so so there is still a chance of this rig gameplay right so what I feel that they can do to further improve Arena is that uh, to not allow players to change their Arena 
defense set up once their arena is being built up you know what I mean so once you have an arena that is running right, you are no longer allowed to change the defense set up in that arena right? so some people might argue like oh I wasn't ready and my defense setup was crap and I want to change it right? so in my opinion I would say too bad you didn't set it in advance there goes your arena right? so what, what this can do is to counter those people that can change uh, their defense setup right, to a super easy one midway right, so that people can attempt an easier stage to score a higher score and you know um, kind of get away with that super high score and stuff like that right, so if they were to change that rule right so meaning that uh, once the arena is being released right, you are no longer allowed to change the defense setup so you can either set a super hard stage or set a super easy stage and you'll be accessible to everybody right so in that case uh, it all comes down to luck uh, whether you bump into that easy stage or that uh, that easy tower or the hard tower right so overall it gives people more um, a, a sense of trust <laughs> i would say uh, so that uh, people won't worry that oh I I played this stage uh, and I got maybe 3,600 points right so I won't be afraid that the owner of the tower will change to something a defense setup that is easier and then a friend comes in gets 4,400 arena get destroyed he gets the tower you know it sucks to, to be in that situation right so hopefully Madhead will do something about it and then it makes arena a lot more fair right so let me know your your opinions in the comment below are you better than 99% of TOS players? Right, so let me tell you honestly, right? If you were to ask me, am I better than 40% of TOS players? I'll probably say, yeah, probably not. Okay, so being being a YouTuber that released TOS videos doesn't mean you are like super top notch kind of player, right? At the back of my head, I can think of so many players that are way better than me uh, in terms of spinning. Right, and then I, I give them all the credits right, that they have, they, they earn it. Right? So overall, I find that making a YouTube channel doesn't make you like this super pro player. Right? So in my opinion, my, my channel right, from the start is to just really guide through uh, newbie players or just players in general right, to, to pass a certain stage. Right? So whatever that I've got, right, in terms of spinning skill now is just basically hard work and practice over the five years it's been five years i've been playing tos right so it's hard to imagine myself being so dedicated to one mobile game right but that's that's how it is now and then that's how i actually got my spinning skills right so overall i really don't think that is that top notch right so i still have i still struggle with you know moving runes diagonally i still have problems looking at possible spin patterns that is on the board right people can point that out to me and i still can't spot it you know things like that still happen right but uh, i think most importantly is to just enjoy the game right of how it is right now right and then just have fun right don't don't really compare too much <laughs> about spin spinning skills and stuff like that right we, we, with that kind of mindset it feels it will make you feel like stress right to play the game right so just um just spin and just enjoy the game right you you tend to spin better if you you know don't stress out and just relax enjoy the game okay so next question asking what is the best setup for vr hephaestus team okay so this is what i usually run is basically like a staple team to me right in terms of fire grid right so what you have is the vr have tiers right you want to you might want to throw in media or vr fire yen right if you have gotten that black card good for you power with a virtual rebirth her right i would say put fire yen over media right so you don't get that 1.5 times damage to you right so vr have tiers vr yen Right, you want to put in Kyo Kusanagi because he's a freaking staple <laughs> in uh, VR Hephaestus team right now right? and then 
we want to put in a uh, Hyam Do. Yes, the one that cancels heart runes and transfer the drop rate of heart runes into fire runes. Right, Hyam Do. And then throw in Shakuro from, I think, like, what? Easter? Easter? Guild event and stuff like that is one of the guild events that you you get her at max skill, right? Just level her up to max level and just use her. Right, so what she do is to give you um fire runes have effect of heart runes, right? So use him though to cancel away heart runes, you don't need them. And then you have tons of fire runes and then which is tons of healing. Right? So if you're if what if you are to worry about HP, right? Shakuro is dragon, right? Him though, have stairs, all these have really I would say quite bulky HP right in terms of fire cards right so overall the team HP is pretty massive right and then you have massive HP massive burst damage right there is is literally the perfect um Hephaestus setup right so give that a try then let me know how it goes all right so the last question asking thoughts on when the 10th seal will be released and second favorite anime Alright, so let's answer the first one first. Right, so thoughts on when the Tensu is gonna be released? I would say it's gonna be any time. Uh, mm, maybe give Mad Hit two months, one month, two months. Like it shouldn't be too, too late from now. Right, so uh, Mad Hit have teased um Tensu. Right, um, it is pretty much finalized already. They are just running through the story mode, um, the stages, finalizing the stages and stuff like that. Right, so basically, what they have is the total framework is done, right? So they are just probably waiting for a good time to drop the 10 seal on us, right? So the reason why I say it won't be t too late, right, is because everything has been set, right? For example, the team skill, uh, the enemy skill and stuff like that, right? So if Mehe is to drag this too long right the team skills are going to be outdated and they have to redo the entire thing again right, so in my opinion we have been encountering pretty sadistic skills nowadays right so if mad hit have done this 10 soon long ago right their skills is going to be easy right so it's going to be a super easy clear for us right for the 10 seal. i don't think they want that right mad hit love to put super sadistic skills in 10 seal and watch us uh, suffer and cry right so um, yeah I think we won't have to wait for too long right before the Tensu is being released and then second question favorite anime right so I'm not really a, I'm not really super into anime right so currently I'm watching uh, Shokugeki no Soma right I, yes I know I'm very outdated <laughs> Uh, I'm currently still at season 1 right? so I'm still getting through the anime but my all-time favorite would still be One Piece right so yes classic anime right so it's still ongoing and I've been watching it since I was a little boy right so I would still say that their story is still pretty awesome right so if you guys have any anime right similar to One Piece and stuff like that you can introduce them to me right so I've yet to watch Hunter x Hunter myself so before the collaboration comes out I will have to watch it right so that's all so with that i've concluded the q a session for the month of april right so those have been pretty awesome questions right so hopefully uh i won't be too late for may's q a right so someone do give me a reminder right on my facebook page if i were to send to make a post too late maybe if i haven't set up a post for q a um after May 20th, right? Do hit me a PM, say, hey, you're forgetting your QA session again, <laughs> right? So I'll be I'll be quick to respond to you and then set up the post. Right, so with that, that's all for the QA session for the month of April, right? If you enjoy this video, do give it a like and then as usual, see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.